Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to episode 170. We made it. And we are here. It is uh, recording this on a Monday. How's everybody's week? Again, yeah. everybody's weekend. The week this week you so tricked far. me. I was good. My week was my week was good. My weekend was terrible. Oh really? No, I'm just kidding. Just, you said weekend. Well, I meant to say weekend. Oh okay. okay. Mm, you just, it felt like you were trying to trap me in, in, mm. in something. Well, now I'm interested to hear about your horrible weekend. I didn't have a horrible oh. weekend. It was fine. Okay. It was a, it was a fine weekend. So. All right. It was good. Got to be a church. Me, me too. Me too. Me e too. What is happening with our, <laughs> with our word structure today? <laughs> But he too. Too. All of a sudden, I went into Spanish. <laughs> okay, <laughs> must have been a bad weekend. That's what I'm thinking. Something Maybe happened. this is stuff y'all don't want to tell us about your weekend. Maybe. Okay. No. I, don't, I don't have anything. Did you have something exciting happening this Although weekend? Although e too actually means you too. I'm sorry for saying that. Uh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do Not you have something exciting on your weekend, Jason? Feels like oh, you me? wanted us to ask no, you I'm about just, your I just, weekend. I'm, I'm just starting conversation. There you go. But I had a fine weekend. I, I, I went to the prom. All oh, right, there you good go. for you. My, my wife and I chaperoned the Northgate prom. Well, that go. sounds good. Mm. At the Fox, I heard it was at the Fox. That oh, was the best really? Part. That was the best part of it. Well, that okay. is pretty cool. But you know, stood against a wall, watched teenagers look awkward. How long does the prom last? Too long. I can tell you that. <laughs> uh, it was about let's see, seven to eleven. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, that was a long, long time. It was long. It, and is the prom just drop in for the kids? They can come and go as they want, and they do. Well, that's what I was I about to say. What 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 would you uh, estimate is the average amount of time a teenager would spend it? I'd say those maybe two hours right in the center of all of that. That makes sense. Was about the the the, the moments that mattered. They had dancing. Oh yes, and mm-hmm. and they take pictures. Not like they used to. Okay. Yeah, mom and dad. Mom and dad take pictures before you leave. Yes, Mm -hmm. there's no like professional photographer over in the corner. Really? No, 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 none of that stuff. That was different even when I went. When I went in 2007. So Mm. when I went back in the day. Back in the day. Even then, we we didn't. But we still danced to Lil John's "Get Low." That was (laughs) that was not even a hot song at the time. That song came out when I was in middle school. I I have a question. Okay, I must. did you have a kid at this dance as well? Was no. that okay? No, because that's an added level of complication. No. Sometimes Mm-mm. my wife is a teacher, therefore she can be a part of the chaperone that crew. And so does she have? Have to... you been at a prom and with with your older daughter when she that, was there? That's an interesting conversation because when that moment happened where we could have gone, my older daughter made it very clear we were to stay away. I think that's I think that's what Sawyer was getting to. Is that it might be appropriate because you have yeah. a you have a younger daughter. Which, interestingly enough, one of the reasons we decided to go to this one was because we thought, well, our older daughter or younger daughter will be there next year. She won't want us there, and she heard us having that conversation, and she was like, "I don't care." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Oh really?" Do. And she was like, "In fact, I think it'd be pretty cool. Y'all should come." It was like she was inviting us to, and I'm like, "That might change next year." That's an odd. It yeah. might change. But that's also but I would just not. say it might kids not. Are knowing both of 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 your daughters, yeah. that also seems like the difference in their personalities it though, is. too. I was gonna Very say your older so. seems she wants her privacy. She oh, wants yes. to be able to do her and mm. Ava seems more on the whatever it is. <laughs> whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing phases her. That's what that has been my impression. Uh, I always tell people this story. Uh I, I went to see a therapist at one point in my life, and he uh, was doing like testing on our family to see how we all right, interacted, right. how the family system kind of works. And when he got done with all the testing, he said, "You know, your youngest daughter is the most normal of everyone." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "You're right." Uh, I, I was going to say, I know in your whole family, I think I would agree with that. She was the good. most normal. So. Well, that means that you've been a good parent. The That's longer right. you've been a parent, you become because you know the goal of parenting is not that your kids don't go to counseling; it's that they go to counseling for something different than you went yeah. to counseling. Yeah, for. that's right. Because that means right. you've ended the problem. If they go for mm. the same thing you went for, mm, you didn't do your job. Well, I'm yeah. batting a thousand on that one. There <laughs> so, you go. All right, we're not here to talk about parenting. Although you could tune into the next podcast. True a Thursday. Nice shameless plug on Thursday. There you go. Yeah. The Not Great Parents Podcast. If you haven't been watching that podcast, you're missing something. You mean something. we were just recording all that stuff about prom right there? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> said, but I, we I, were. It just hit me. We the were, red light is on. And forgot we were recording. <laughs> I just thought we were just talking like we often do. It no. turns out 
I'm, I apologize for all of you that have sat through that now. <laughs> what I'm doing <laughs> interesting I'm sorry. is there were a fair amount of times we referred to a fourth party known as the audience. Do you <laughs> normally have it. conversations <laughs> where there's an imagined fourth party in the conversation? Jesus is uh, not, not imagined. imagined. Not imagined. Not imagined. Not imagined, but there is a fourth party. I'll just say, you know, I'm not always listening. Yes, I was going to say, when I was describing the names of his children and talking about them, you just thought, well, Nathan's always referring to people in third person. You know, we haven't had a moment like that on this podcast in quite some time. So right. I'm glad we had that. I had to go back. Uh, Happy for all of you that have not scrubbed through this. Someone asked me a question that I knew we had answered on the podcast, so I went back to watch one, and it was from about a year and a half ago, and there was this length of just talking about nonsense. For, yes. And I thought, man, we haven't done that in a long we haven't. time. And I've been diligent to try and cut it out, but I missed missed yeah. my opportunity on this You one. started it up. I did. It was my fault. And I apologize to the audience that hates this part. That's why I think I thought it wasn't happening. I know. <laughs> I know. But now we're going to get to why we're here. For sure. For sure. <laughs> we have a question, as we always have questions. And this one came in just a few weeks ago. And uh, I've, I've had this question quite often. People wonder about this, so I thought we would tackle it today. Here's the question. Was heaven an option for those who died before Jesus? If he is the key to salvation, how did, those, how did that work for those who lived and died before Jesus? Hmm. So, so, you know, there's, there, there, this is not what this person asked, but there's something in there. <laughs> and we can't go back to the way we used to do it. This ahead. is not what they asked. All right, go ahead. But it's interesting to me that heaven and salvation are equated with them. Mm. That those are the, mm. that, you know, <laughs> Jesus the only way to, to salvation. Okay, I agree. Mm -hmm. And then... Heaven's the only part that mattered for the Old Testament people, not mm. whether yeah. not whether they could have, you know, the kind of life, that, Je life. that Jesus offers. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say, I think often when, when we think of this question, we think of it in terms of fairness. Like, it just seems unfair. You got born before Jesus, and, mm -hmm. oh, well, you missed your shot, cause, and it was out of your control. Mm -hmm. Because our natural conclusion is that heaven is the goal uh, of everything. And by heaven, I assume this person is talking about afterlife, yes. et eternity of afterlife mm -hmm. uh, with God. And so the, the question in that sense becomes about, well, if the goal of everything is to die and then go to heaven, if the point of living is to die and go mm -hmm. to heaven, then that's really unfair for those people mm -hmm. who, who lived before. But if the point of life is cooperation with God, living mm -hmm. life with God, mm -hmm. uh, it, the whole story of the Old Testament is God cooperating and partnering with people, uh, but the way in which he did it, because humans were so, um, well, and are so inherently sinful by our nature, uh, it was uh, doomed to not work out until Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to come and fulfill uh, that way, that there were failures along the way. Even the most holy people that God partnered with, Abraham, Moses, David, all of them had some level of failure in their relationship with God uh, that that was not complete, uh, yet God was gracious to them, and God continued to work with them. But it was never um, the complete, perfect mm -hmm. way uh, of Jesus. So I'm sorry for getting us off on that no, track, no, no. but that it gets pertinent. Okay, to that conversation. Yeah, I just you know I, that whole idea is so uh, it's in the front of my mind all the time now. That when people it the, as it's become more apparent to me that almost everybody equates um, that the whole goal of Christianity is it doesn't even start hardly until you die. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, and which you know, logically, then you go. Then if if God gets me saved, why do I have to wait so long to die? Hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. particularly for people that believe once you're saved, you're always saved. Yeah, I mean, it really seems you know mm -hmm. irrelevant at that yes. point. So I I got saved when I was ten, and I got to wait till I'm ninety. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's like the rest of the whole deal is almost a punishment. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I got to sit and like, so. And I will say this before we get too far off on that. Uh, next week's question, we are going to get into that much more in depth. Okay. Well, then we'll hold off on that. Um, on how that looks for us if heaven is not the ultimate goal, but there's more to it than that. It's better than that, I heard, I heard people So say. for this particular question, and I will pose yes. it as a question to okay. you guys since that is our uh, current uh, for our on mission groups, mm-hmm. our our practice. I'll count this as one of my questions okay. uh, with you guys. Uh, I cannot think of any definitive statement that anyone makes about this. In 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 reference to, I know there are statements people you mean have in the Bible. Right? In the Bible, okay. I should say that people have taken to say, well, that may be what they're talking about here. Mm. I can't think of a time where Jesus goes, by the way. <laughs> Here's what happened to all those people who came before. Mm-mm. There, But the, I think there are a few hints. I'll say this, and then I'll get to the question. There are things like Jesus seems to refer to Abraham yes. and Elijah, um, uh, Moses. I'm trying to think about There are a few other handful of people that he refers to. As well, people. Moses and Elijah appear with Je- Jesus right. on the Mount of Transfiguration, which seems like if they had been doomed to hell, Right. That had been a good time to tell somebody. Well, yeah. Or it was a really <laughs> I, had, weird... I had to pull them back out of hell, guys. Or when they showed up, <laughs> you know, like, all right, Jesus, can we get something straight here? <laughs> no, right. can we, can At that this? moment on the Mount of Transfiguration, if they are doomed because they were before, it had been a really good time to give us a clue. And he refers to God as, um, in that, the, I'm trying to think of the, the full context of the conversation where he talks about um, God being the same God of Abraham and Jacob and Isaac, and he's and he's the point that he's making is that it's he's the same God mm-hmm. then as he is now. He even says yeah. the thing about David. Well, when the Sadducees come to him and they start to argue with Jesus about the resurrection, right. mm-hmm. he makes that, which is a very clever riddle, by mm-hmm. the way. When he mm-hmm. he turns it around on him and says, "You talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you also don't believe in a literal resurrection." Right. So is he the God of the living? Or is he a God of dead people? Right. And they had to just, they were stumped. Right. So Jesus is intimating that they are living on. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're not exactly dead. Right. And okay. then there's one, and this was a question. So can y'all think of other examples mm-hmm. where this thing is maybe hinted at? I think there are two places. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that again, people have taken it to be. And there's a thing, and if you, the person wants to investigate, there isn't a lot in Protestant literature about this, mm-hmm. but in... Um, Eastern Orthodoxy, which is most people think the oldest form of Christianity, yes, <laughs> uh, which precedes Roman Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a thing called the harrowing of hell, yes. which is that people often think Jesus dies on Friday and then just is Does gone, nothing, nothing on, Saturday. on Saturday. But their tradition teaches that on Saturday, Jesus is with the place of the dead, preaching to those that are dead and telling them the good news that he's done away with death and hell and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the place dead and all of that kind of stuff and releasing them from that place. So, and that idea is uh, there's a place, I think it's Ephesians 3, uh, where he says he led captivity captive, uh, those that were in captivity and gave gifts to men as he arose. Um, But not everybody agrees that's what's happening. That's right. But that has been a long-term part of Christianity back to early, early, early oh, yeah. Eastern Christianity, oh, which, again, you have to the remember. Apostles it's creed. in the Apostles' Creed. Yeah, it's Apostles in the Apostles' Creed. creed. That's exactly right. That's so, the oldest creed we have. Out that's right. Mm, no, is isn't, it? The, isn't the Nicene Creed? Nicene is oldest? Okay. Mm, I'm confused. Or the creed that's in First Corinthians. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well, well, First that, Corinthians 15. I'm outside I know, the Bible. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, Don't get yeah. technical, Nathan. <laughs> just, gosh, exactly. That's what I was going to do. You got there for me. Yeah. First Corinthians 15. I know that one isn't there. Okay. Let's go back and talk about prom. <laughs> let's get back to prom. No. No, let's don't. So I, I don't think that people were all doomed no, I don't before think. Jesus. No. So. No, and I think. But it, then, it also doesn't fit, and we talk about this on the podcast, yes. that doesn't fit with the character of no. God revealed in Jesus it as well. It does not. Well, so and, I don't, not. and I think it does this the idea behind this question really goes to the thing we talked about at the beginning of if I think, and and I think this is actually an important distinction to make only in the sense that if I think that the point of why God created humanity 
was to test us of some or somehow and try to figure out, am I going to go to heaven one day? Which, let's just get again, that idea that God created us to test us is not a Christian idea. It's a Greek idea of God. That's right. That the gods test humanity. It's not God created us in love to love. Yes. yes. That's the our, that's the Christian idea of God. We aren't created as playthings. Mm-hmm. Right. So that idea, though, that we kind of get of the goal of it was heaven, eventually, maybe you've already had this question, but I just doing youth ministry forever and then talking to college sophomores, at some point they take a philosophy class and some philosophy professor really drives at them and going, well, then why didn't God just make everyone and put them in heaven? You know, eventually these kind of things start, if the goal of it is to get off somewhere that's not here, that falls apart under philosophical stuff. But if the point of life is participation with God, God creates us because he loves us. Just the same reason that when my, you know, when my kids say, so why did you decide to have kids? Decide to have kids because my wife and I, we love, we love one another. And we just, that love makes you want to have other people to love. Yeah. You want to extend that love And so God creates in love, to love, and to be loved, to have this thing. And part of love is this partnership of it, that I don't don't have children for them to, I had to say that to my girls at one time. I know right now, because of the age stage of parenting we're in, we got lots of do this, don't do this. And they at one point, did you just have kids so you could make rules? Mm -hmm. Which is how many of us think about God. Mm -hmm. He just made us to tell us what to do. And I said, I didn't create you. To have rules, uh, but I have to have these rules so that you become the kind of person that, and I tell them this all the time, so you can become the kind of person I can trust. Mm-hmm. I want you to become the kind of person that I can trust to be in relationship with, because that's ultimately what I want for for my kids. You know, and I look, I mean, you and I have a good relationship. I look at the relationship you have with your adult daughter, say, yeah. but also I was about to say that that's you're not there yet. That's the best part of having is. older kids is when you see them be trustworthy right. and, you, and you let that go, it's the best. Yeah, And that's the goal. And so if, if you take that model, which is kind of the model Jesus gives us to think of God, right, as a father yep. Yep. who has children that he loves, and the goal is I want to be in relationship. So sin is a problem because sin is all the things that make, that make me not trustworthy. It's all the things that make me self-focused and only interested in my good. And it hurts me. And it hurts me. And, and it hurts, hurts other people. And it, that hurts God. Yeah. And so the point of life is to live in trusting, relation, loving relationship with God. And then that will just naturally carry over into eternity because God is faithful to me, and he is eternal. He's not stopping just because I take a last breath. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so if if I have been faithful to him, he's faithful to me, and mm-hmm. we carry on. This is the direction that life goes. Well, I think people miss at times as well, you know, that God reveals himself. That It's not like every... I know people get confused because there is a lot of places you can misunderstand uh, in the Old Testament the character of God. I get that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to. Absolutely. But there are clear places where, like we read it in church yesterday before that new song we sang where it says Yahweh, mm-hmm. faith, you know, and he gives that definitive statement to mm-hmm. Moses, which I'm going to forget the words, but he talks about. Slow my, to anger, full of compassion, mercy, yeah. unfailing love. Yeah, God. which is totally different than the God's of the Greeks yes. and the Egyptians and really anybody else in history. There are no gods that aren't playing with human beings. When you read about the gods, we are trying to appease them all the time. Yes. And when God reveals himself, even in the Old Testament to Moses, that's his statement. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most repeated statements in the Old Testament where he says this again and again and again. This is who I am. And even in the Old Testament, this thing of And I don't want to discount, I'm not this, boy, I hope people don't hear me saying Jesus wasn't necessary, but Enoch goes to heaven, apparently. Yeah, he gets taken away from heaven. He doesn't die. Elijah Elijah goes to heaven in the Old Testament without dying or any of those steps that we think are required. God just takes them. There are places where he talks about people like Joseph, that God was with him. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. like he go. it's an echo back to right. being with Adam in, in the first mm-hmm. of Genesis, that God was 
with these people. David talks about going to be with his deceased son. Right. And he expects that's to be what's going to be united with God that's and right. with his family. That's right. So. That's right. So the <clears throat> Well, and the fact that the Sadducees are a sect of Judaism yes. and the distinctive of the Sadducees is they go, there is no resurrection, means that the other Jews who are following God right. based on the Old Testament are going, oh, we're, we're probably there's probably something. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I think where a lot of people get into, like I said, I've heard this question asked a lot. And I think Me where too. People I get, have to. Where people get into this question is we often... We reduce Jesus down to a mechanical thing mm -hmm. yes. where there's this mechanism that God used and that was Jesus and he went to the cross and therefore everybody who puts their trust and faith in him now gets to go to heaven. And there's truth in all of those statements, yep. yes, but we we it becomes so mechanical that it's like, oh, well, what if all those people who didn't have the chance to put faith in Jesus are now excluded mm -hmm. as if that... And again, I'll, I'll push back right to this point. Does that fit with the God you see revealed in Jesus? That is, like we said mm -hmm. before in other podcasts, he's looking for a loophole or he's right. looking yeah. for a gotcha. Oh, well, you were born at the wrong time. You didn't have the right kind of faith. Sorry, you're out. That is not the God we see. Right. And mm -hmm. so I, anytime you get caught up in that mechanism of how this whole thing works, you're going to be asking questions like this and then I think often miss the nature of God. I agree with that so. totally. We we are we are the ones that are often looking for legal kind of terms to deal with God. Well, I got I did do this so then you have to. Yep. Which isn't relational. Nope. No. That's contractual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we think that he he interacts with us the same way. Mm -hmm. God is way more relational, caring, loving. Yeah. Than than you we want than, than most of us are. And then yeah. you can even imagine. Yeah. I, I so I think it grows out of who we are. Mm -hmm. So I think do we, we have definitive Bible passages on on what happens with the people? No, as Nathan said at the beginning, there are only a couple of times it even refers to this really. Which I also think, and this was this was gonna be my first point, but I got off is the fact that it's not this was going to be my question to you guys, <laughs> but then we got off on other stuff is don't you think the fact that there's not a lot of references and verses about it means that it's not the question anyone was asking at the time. That's exactly. right. Exactly. It, right. it points to the fact that this is not the question the Bible is answering, that's right. is yeah. how do I get everybody that's into a, a... That's a great point you make because a, a lot of times the questions we are asking yes. are not po posed or answered in Scripture which ought to make us rethink our questions. Well, That's because right. I think to the point that you're making earlier, I think the assumption of all the early believers was God is so good and gracious, and clearly Abraham loved God. Mm -hmm. Clearly, most clearly, there were people throughout the nation of Israel, not everyone, because a lot of them totally blew it up. That's right. But there were lots of them that were faithful. They were a remnant. They were faithful to God. A God who has been, who says, even if you are faithless, I am faithful. Well, then, of course, he's going to be faithful to those who were faithful. That's right. You know, I think that's the assumption they have of there is some way God revealed to Jesus, but even if it was this thing that we talk about of the harrowing of hell, that he goes to the, the realm of the dead and reveals, hey, I am the way. Well, of course, those people would go, great. <laughs> Exactly. We've been waiting for it. That 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 sounds. And they good. would almost. I got to believe. Be thinking. We knew there was something like this coming. Right. Because well, Jesus says, you, "Abraham and Mo." You know, you. They looked forward to the right. day I would come. So there was this idea they knew of God's Messiah would come and make things right. We don't know the technical details of what is the realm of the dead and what does that mm -hmm. look like. What we know, and I think this is the part where we have to have trust, like Jason said. I know the character of God who is a faithful, you know, slow to anger, abounding in compassion and mercy. Of course, in my mind, of course he would be faithful to people uh, and, and, and be gracious to those. Even if they didn't know the name Jesus beforehand, mm -hmm. they were following in the footsteps of who, who Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of. Yeah, I think it's consistent with the character of God and Paul talking in several different places of, I'm responsible for the revelation available to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, that, and it's why in Romans, Paul is so concerned for the Jewish people. Is not He's not talking about in times past. He's talking about they're ignoring 
what's happening in front of them right now. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's I'm responsible for what I have interacted with. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. So we're going to get, we like I said, we touched on a little bit of that whole idea of is <clears throat> the goal of life just to get to heaven. So someone wants to know, and this is for next week, uh, our next question is, if that's true, then what implications does that have on how we follow Jesus? Because I know a lot of us were brought that's up. That's a great question. Well, a lot of us were brought up in systems where that was the whole thing. And, yes. But now that, and I think this person who asked the question is, so now that I've shifted that focus, that has some downline implications. Mm-hmm. And they want us to talk about those downline implications. So that is what we are going to talk about next week. We also have room for more questions. Uh, I will say, uh, if you have a question you want to uh, uh, submit to the podcast, click on that uh, link in the description, and it'll be coming up real soon because you're you're almost first in line. So, even if you don't have like a specific question, I, I know some people yeah. may not know. If you have like a, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if there's like a topic that you don't have a specific question, or that a passage good. of scripture you've read, because how yeah. yeah. often have people walk up to yeah. me and ask yes. that? You can ask that because one thing's for sure, we got thoughts on it, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm confident that's true. whether it be you know yeah. the state of the American prom or that's true. You know. What what now, can we extrapolate out? from what y'all talked about the American prom or just Coweta County Northgate oh, High that's, School prom? That's a whole nother conference. <laughs> I'll just right. tell you this: I just went to a conference, and I think I could write a book and say this is how all American high schools are, and I'd, I'd be welcome on the uh, on, on oh, conference yeah. stage. I guarantee I you, you could sell the book, and I bet yeah. you're going to use that in future editions of the Not Great Parents podcast. Yes, that's right. There's my my next podcast. I'm just throwing in plugs. That's all over true. The place. That's true. But that'll be coming up Thursday. So if you're subscribed yeah. to this podcast feed or you're on YouTube, I think we're answering a question on this week's podcast. That's awesome. So we'll see. All right. Well, y'all tune into that. Come back next week. We'll talk about this one. So see y'all. Have a good week.